What's up guys, today we're going to be going over Ergo Sum Part 2. First breaking down all the frames on the sword, then all the exotic perks, seeing which combos are the best overall, talking about the callus, and finally one of the builds I'm using with the sword that is just the most fun I've ever had in Destiny. Definitely the most fun in a very long time, if not ever. It really is one of the most unique builds you can do right now in Destiny 2. So jumping in with the callus on the sword, the newest part, Transcendent Steel, dealing damage with a Transcendent Grenade, grants or goes some ammo. So the way this works is once you pop Transcendent, if you throw a grenade, you'll get 3 ammo back to the sword about once every second and a half, 2 seconds. It does seem to be on a cooldown and you can't surpass it. Even if you hit a lot of things with the same grenade, you will only get the 3 ammo about every 2-ish seconds. And on the Warlock Grenade, it usually proc 3 times per grenade for a total of 9 ammo. And you're going to be able to take advantage of this catalyst quite a lot with a sword by building transcendence very quickly with this trait that's always on the sword, Transcendent Duelist. And then once you are transcendent, defeating targets will lengthen the effect and make it last longer. So all you have to do is build it up, which will happen very quickly for the light side. I use uh, Sacrifice to help with the dark side of it, but the dark side will always take a little bit longer. But you're going to be building up transcendence very quickly with a sword if you use that fragment and just go crazy, maybe put it on a strand primary or stasis primary, hit a few final blows here and there, and you'll just be ready to go. So this sword has five different frames on it, so I'm gonna be first looking at which one's gonna be the best for pure damage output or just different situations in general. So starting off with the new wave frame, this one's gonna hit the least, which makes sense, it's gonna be more for Ackler, and your first light attack while airborne will kind of lunge towards the target, which is cool. The caster is going to hit for a lot. It's going to hit for the same number 10 times. Then we have the lightweight. Then we also have the classic vortex. And finally, the aggressive, the titan one. And if we add up all the damage and compare them to each other, and the parentheses is how much ammo the heavy attack costs, the wave frame was the least, and the vortex was the highest. And the surprise here was caster being pretty close to vortex, and aggressive and light were the exact same. Now with the sword... When you are transcendent, it will do bonus damage, and this is not a static percent. Depending on the frame, I did the testing, some of them are 26%, the waveframe and the caster, the two more accurate focused ones. But then lightweight, vortex, and aggressive all get a 51% increase on the heavy attack, taking the vortex to 86,000. Now moving on to the exotic perks, the first one is going to be gathering light. This is from the Traveler's Chosen. And when you get kills with a weapon, when you stow the sword, it'll convert the stacks into ability energy for all three of your main abilities. And it's going to be roughly 10% per stack for all three. This is always dependent on your base stat. So right here, as you see with times 10, I get a full grenade back, but not quite my full Phoenix dive because I have tier 10 discipline and not tier 10 recovery. Moving on to Sacred Flame. This one's going to be kind of cool. I think it would be a really cool combo with wave frame because the way it works is when you do a heavy attack it will proc enemies to detonate and then you have to attack them again or when they die they will explode so with a wave frame you could proc it on a bunch of enemies your first light attack would zoom in towards them and cause them all to explode so that could be a cool combo but in my opinion probably not the best act clear perk on this sword and look at the damage that this adds to like a boss fight it's going to be not much at all, only 6,000 after every heavy attack. Next up, we have the perfect fifth, which is where every fifth attack will attach a delayed explosion that will scorch the target. This one's going to be pretty good for single target damage, causing them to burn and scorch over time, while also having an initial explosion. And this works very interesting with Vortex and the caster frame, because we can proc it instantly on a heavy attack. The Vortex hits six times, so obviously that's more than five. We'll proc the explosion. But caster frames, as we said, hit ten times. So it actually procs it twice per heavy attack. And you'll get two explosions and more sacks of Scorch. Which means more damage on the Lingering Burn. Which leads me to trying to test it with Ember of Ashes on a Solar Subclass. The two initial explosions after the 10 hits of the caster frame will be enough stacks of Scorch to just make the target ignite. But the thing about swapping over to a solar subclass is with Transcendent Duelist, we get more damage while Transcendent, which means we have to be on Prismatic. So comparing 
the Prismatic damage with this perk to the Ember of Ashes damage with this perk. As you see, we add up all the numbers, do all the math of everything going on. If we remember from earlier, the Caster Frames only get a 26% increase from being transcendent compared to the 51% of the other frames. So it's going to be a lot closer than you might think. The top three are just the added damage of the perk and the bottom two are the total with the heavy tech included. So the total while transcendent on prismatic is 121 and with ashes, it goes up to 123. So honestly, pretty close depending on what subclass and builder using both or them be very viable. Then we have arc conductor by far the best actor perk on this weapon and the perk I'll be using in my build later in the video. It is just so much fun. So how this works is when you do heavy attack, you get our conductor for five seconds, but instead of like on the risk runner where you then have to shoot targets to make it spread electricity, it is just simply a bubble around you that anything that gets close to it, it will proc. So you're just like a walking ball of energy that will just shock anything nearby. And it does so much damage that most things in the game is going to be killing every red bar near you just by walking close to them. Then we have Stormbringer, which is from the Cloud Strike, I believe. I know also the Thunderlord, but I think it's the Cloud Strike perk. And this is on every third rapid kill. It will spawn in like lightning from the sky. And this is just not as good as our Conductor because it's more random. You can't really control it. And we also have Insectoid Robot Grenades from the Colony. And this one could potentially be good. The bugs do a decent amount of damage, but just like the previous one, you can't really control where it's on go. Sometimes it's kind of don't go after anything. So overall, the best ag clear perk on the sword is by far Arc Conductor. It's just going to be the best feeling, most consistent, and you can just run around and purposely go after whatever target you want and not have to rely on RNG at all. Next up is the Unplanned Reprieve, which is from Telesto. And this one is kind of interesting. So when you do heavy attack, it creates the Telesto bolts that will wait for something to come by to detonate. Or if it's on a boss, it will happen right away. And the thing that is weird about this I found is that depending on the frame, it actually spawns in more or less. So again, damage on Carl. There's going to be a lot of numbers going on. Breaking down how many get spawned in. Vortex is going to be the most. Just put them all over the place and you might think that'd be bad for a boss fight but on a boss it kind of just knows to detonate instantly and they all hit which is pretty nice and we add up how many get spawned in from a vortex it's gonna be 10 every single time which makes sense it costs six ammo to do the heavy attack compared to that of a aggressive being only eight then with the caster frame it seems to be roughly six so not that great. And the final perk on this weapon is going to be Woodpeck Rounds. I went over this a lot in my first video, so I'm not going to break it down all over again. I already went over all the DPS implications of Woodpeck Rounds on this sword itself and Heavy Swords. But the way it works is you get it for 10 seconds. Light attacks will spawn in one. Heavy attacks will spawn in three. And these things do a decent amount of damage on Carl and will add roughly like 25% DPS to swords. But overall, looking at the best combos for purely the most amount of damage from your heavy attack, it's going to be a fifth with caster either on prismatic or ashes on solar and the unplanned reprieve with vortex on prismatic. Then the best one for Agler is by far our conductor on caster frame or wave frame. Caster frame does more damage and you can make it go further to attack enemies farther away and then it'll make you the arc conductor and you can kind of kill stuff close by i think it's just the best combo overall and the fourth rule i would recommend getting will just be a wolf pack one either with lightweight or aggressive preferably because it costs the least amount of ammo to proc the heavy attack at three lightweight will be a faster animation overall so probably the best choice so overall once again the four combos i think are 100 worth getting is gonna be fifth plus caster i'm playing the plus vortex Arc Conductor plus Caster, and finally Wolfpack plus Lightweight. And finally, the last part of this video is going over a build that is just making the sword so much fun to use. This will be a kind of continuation evolution of my Verity 2.0 build that I already uploaded. So just mousing over through everything, it's not going to be too much different than that. I think the big differences are mostly the fragments and maybe some of the mods. And on our exotic class item, as I used in that video, we have Osmomancy and Verity. And the way this build works is you just have Devour to play incredibly aggressively. 
you have Helion and the Arc Conductor just to like delete everything nearby without having to have to do anything. All you have to do is heavy attack like once every five, six seconds. And then the sword, since it's Arc, all of the Arc Conductor kills count for Verity's Brow, which then feeds into your grenade. And the Storm Grenade jolts, it'll kill a bunch of things, do a lot of damage. And then with Osmomancy, you get like 75, 80% of it back instantly. Plus the Devour kills, plus any kills with Arc Conductor near you with a sword. More often than not, when you throw a grenade, you will have it back right away. If not, you might need like a kill. So it's just kind of like a crazy chain of using the heavy attack on your sword and then throwing your grenade back and forth. You will always have death throws times five, getting the double damage of the grenade. You'll get it back incredibly fast. And then with the sword perks on the artifact, along with some of the ones for the subclasses, you're gonna always gonna be radiant. You're gonna always gonna have sword ammo. And then we also have the Lucent Blade, which will be a 35% increase for swords, which does apply to the Arc Conductor damage. And you're going to be Radiant all the time, which is going to be 25% buff, also applying to that of the Arc Conductor damage. So you're just going to be walking around with Devour and a Helion turret while your Arc Conductor is like zapping things for like 25,000 every single time they get inside your bubble. It is just absolutely crazy. You definitely have to give this build a try if you haven't yet. I'm going to go ahead and link it down below in the description if you want to try it out. And I think that's going to be it for the video. Like usual, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.